turns out they were right. After all that research and development out there, they were right. Oh my God, carbs are bad. Who knew? Now somebody please explain to me why, I mean, why are people still buying these things? They have the technology of a toilet. They're literally flushing gasoline down your engine. Go EFI. Too expensive? I don't think so. Let's break it down. Let's start with the carburetor setup here. This is a 600 CFM Street Avenger carburetor, about 450 bucks, on top of a 289 cubic inch engine. Now, I know what you're thinking, right off the bat, see, that's cheaper than the Sniper EFI setup. Hold your horses, you're putting the cart for the horse here. First off, you need to recognize that your project car is not just carburetor. There's a lot more to this whole system than just fuel. What does most people do? They take the carburetor out of the box, throw it on the engine. That's it, done. Shut the hood, let's go romp on it. And that's usually what happens to most people where they start fouling out plugs, car starts running bad, doesn't want to start, because it's just glugging fuel down. And especially with current fuel prices, I want to keep driving my vehicles. So fuel EFI. So what you're gonna to have to do is put new jets in it. All right, that's not a big deal, but now you get to buy jets. Sure. Oh, I need a power valve. It's not delivering fuel fast enough here and there. I need the secondaries to open up sooner. Got vacuum secondaries. I need a lighter spring. All these costs keep adding up. Not including you need to get a fuel pump to make this work, mechanical or electrical. Those costs can be different depending on what you want for your entire system. Fuel line is pretty cheap. There's going to be some other miscellaneous things that might pop in and maybe you need a riser because it's going to whack into something. A lot of variables that play into this. Do you leave your vehicle stock? No, no you don't. This is where things start to change rapidly for an EFI setup. Now, say it's one year down the road, I got some money saved up, I've had this truck, I'm like, ooh, it's time to hop this thing up, it needs to go, I need to do bigger burnouts. So, what do we do? We need a top end for this thing, we need heads, we need cam, we need rockers, we need new intake manifold, upgrade the ignition system, we are gonna put the power to the ground with this thing. All that, but now you either need two options. Either option one, you bought a 600 CFM carburetor like I have, and now you need a bigger one because you need more air. Then you get to retune it, get more jets, and start this whole process over again. Or if you possibly happen to have a, like, say, 750 CFM carburetor on the top of the engine already, you just need to retune it. it means you need to buy more jets. Now you need to buy more springs and retune this whole thing all over again to make it work. All things that add up when you have a carburetor set up. Not to mention, if you want to put an electric fan, now you need to have a relay set up integrated with there as well, and a controller for your fan. Versus the EFI, you don't have to do that. Speaking of EFI, let's go ahead and jump into that next. EFI stuff's way easier to break down. 1600 bucks to your door, you have a full master setup. Fuel pump, fuel filters, fuel line, all the fittings you need to hook it up to bolt and bolt it to your engine. All this electrical connections, all that, it all is there. Really easy. Maybe a few other miscellaneous electrical connections you need to plumb stuff together, but those are a dollar here and there. They're such minor costs in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't even matter. Now, okay, that's more expensive, but really break it down. I put it on there, I didn't have to buy anything else. Unlike carburetors, you gotta get there your jets and your springs and all those things to make it work like this. I bolted it on, couple electrical connections, done. You want to integrate it with your ignition system depending what you have. I didn't have to buy anything else. I literally plugged one cable into my 6AL box, done. You want to, you have a different type of distributor, you might have to get an adapter to plug it into. Those aren't that, aren't that expensive either. Still cheaper and then runs way more efficiently than a carburetor without tuning anything. I just go in a little handheld that comes with, tell it, this is my cubic inches, this is the idle speed I want. I've done nothing else programming wise in this car and it runs way better than it ever has. Could I have made a car ready to do that? Yes, but all the extra cost and time I have to do to do that. Say, I'm gonna upgrade this engine. I take off the EFI, 
do all my stuff to it. Heads, cans, intake manifolds, rockers, whole nine yards. Put it back on. Throw the EFI setup right back on. Nothing changed. I, I fire it up, let it relearn for a minute, drive it down the road. No more jets, no more springs, nothing else I had to go back, rebuy, or go hunting for. It's already done. I want to put boost on this thing? Great, even better. You want to buy a blow-through carburetor? Those are like 1200 bucks for a blow-through carburetor. Almost as much as this whole master kit, not including the fuel pumps and stuff, you'll need additional for your carburetor set for, for a boosted application. This, I put it on, I want to add boost, I add whatever blower, supercharger, whatever stuff I'm going to do, tell the computer I'm adding boost. Done. It's that easy. I don't have to buy any additional car carburetors floating around. Like, how many people do you know who work with carburetors have three, four, five carburetors just laying around because they constantly change things or they get a bigger engine and they have to get a bigger carburetor? This, I don't have to do that. And if you know that you're going to be or plan on putting a supercharger or something on your engine from the get go, spend the extra few dollars, get a Terminator set up with eight injectors in it instead of four like this one has. And then I can boost it to up to 800 plus horsepower with no problem. And it'll still run on this engine without the boost. It'll run just fine. It'll run great. That's what makes these that much cheaper. The whole ecosystem. I don't need to get a fan controller for this. I just integrate the sniper setup into my fan relay for it to trigger it. My EFI will trigger it because it already came with a coolant temp sensor for the whole setup already. It'll go, oh, trigger the fan, it's ready to come on. You gotta trigger two fans because you have air conditioning. You can do that too through Sniper EFI. You wanna trigger nitrous when you hit X amount of throttle? It'll do that for you too. It's all integrated. It saves you so much money by doing this than the carburetor versus all the nickel and dime you're gonna get through a carburetor. Don't do that to yourself. These are the way to go. But don't agree? Put the comments below. Tell me your thoughts on this. I want to know what you guys think. If it, do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Until next time, peace. Big cars like my Camaro or the F-150 here. F-150, Jesus Christ. What do I drive, Mike? Oh, well, I don't drive this at all yet because <laughs> it's just sitting here. I haven't done anything with it. Shame on me. Shame on me. Bad Mike. Oh, my knee. We're going to start with the carburetor. I'm not even looking at the camera. <laughs>